This is the Perlis Gempo Kecemelangan Listening Test. There are four parts to the test. You will hear each part twice. For each part of the test, there will be time for you to look through the questions and time for you to check your answers. Write your answers on the question paper. You will have six minutes at the end of the test to copy your answers onto the answer sheet. The recording will now be stopped. Please ask any question now because you must not speak during the test. Now open your question paper and look at part one. You will hear people talking in seven different situations. For question one to seven, choose the correct answer A, B, or C. You will hear each recording twice. You now have 30 seconds to look at part one. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. Question one. You will hear two friends talking about buying a new camera. I want to buy a new digital camera in the sales. I have been reading some online reviews and I'm still not sure which one to get. That's the problem with buying one from the internet. You can't try something out before you buy it. Perhaps you should go to a store. Yes, it'd be good to get advice from a real salesperson. It is a shame that the local shop has such a small range of cameras. There's the mall, I suppose. Oh no, I wouldn't go there at this time of the year. It'll be very crowded. The shop down the road is a lot better than it used to be. Now there are new owners. You should give it a try. Okay, I will. Thanks for your advice. Now, listen again. I want to buy a new digital camera in the sales. I have been reading some online reviews and I'm still not sure which one to get. That's the problem with buying one from the internet. You can't try something out before you buy it. Perhaps you should go to a store. Yes, it'd be good to get advice from a real salesperson. It is a shame that the local shop has such a small range of cameras. There's the mall, I suppose. Oh no, I wouldn't go there at this time of the year. It'll be very crowded. The shop down the road is a lot better than it used to be. Now there are new owners. You should give it a try. Okay, I will. Thanks for your advice. Question two. You hear a boy talking about what sport he and his friends play. My friends and I love playing all kinds of sports. From Mondays to Wednesdays, we usually go skating. We go skating at a skate park near our house, so we walk there. Then on Thursdays and Fridays, we play the game at a basketball court. We normally cycle to the basketball court. The weekends, we swim in a public swimming pool and take the train to get to the pool. Now, listen again. My friends and I love playing all kinds of sports. From Mondays to Wednesdays, we usually go skating. We go skating at a skate park near our house, so we walk there. Then on Thursdays and Fridays, we play the game at a basketball court. We normally cycle to the basketball court. The weekends, we swim in a public swimming pool and take the train to get to the pool. Question 3. 
You will hear two people talking about a local curry restaurant. I went out to the new curry restaurant in town at the weekend. I went there last week. I was really impressed. I had lamb curry, and I think it was the best one I've ever tasted. My chicken curry was delicious too, but it took ages to arrive. My wife's meal arrived ten minutes before mine, and they didn't even apologize. Really? Mine arrived quickly, and our waiter was friendly and efficient. And considering the quality of the food, I didn't think it was too expensive. Well, I can name three curry restaurants near here that are cheaper, where the food is just as good. Now listen again. I went out to the new curry restaurant in town at the weekend. Oh, I went there last week. I was really impressed. I had lamb curry, and I think it was the best one I've ever tasted. My chicken curry was delicious too, but it took ages to arrive. My wife's meal arrived ten minutes before mine, and they didn't even apologize. Really? Mine arrived quickly, and our waiter was friendly and efficient. And considering the quality of the food, I didn't think it was too expensive. Well, I can name three curry restaurants near here that are cheaper, where the food is just as good. Question four. You hear someone discussing her educational background. I have excellent results in biology, but I like cooking very much. My mother persuaded me to do medicine, and I agreed because I didn't want to disappoint her. But at one point, while in my second year of medicine, I realized that was not what I wanted. So I told her about quitting and joining culinary course. She was shocked, but accepted my decision because I believe I just have to follow my heart. Now listen again. I have excellent results in biology, but I like cooking very much. My mother persuaded me to do medicine, and I agreed because I didn't want to disappoint her. But at one point, while in my second year of medicine, I realized that was not what I wanted. So I told her about quitting and joining culinary course. She was shocked, but accepted my decision because I believe I just have to follow my heart. Question five. You will hear two people talking about an arrangement they have made with a friend. I just received a message from Elise. She is running late. She says she won't be here until half past one. That's annoying. If she arrives at one thirty, we won't start the work until two o'clock, and at four o'clock, we'll start to get dark. And Elise is always half an hour later than she says. Why don't we go for a walk near our house? Then we won't waste time driving somewhere. I can walk around here at any time. I think if she isn't here by two o'clock, we shouldn't wait for her. It's not fair for her to spoil our day. She can meet us when she's finally ready. Perhaps you are right. It's hard to know what to do. Now listen again. I just received a message from Elise. She is running late. She says she won't be here until half past one. That's annoying. If she arrives at one thirty, we won't start the work until two o'clock, and at four o'clock, we'll start to get dark. And Alice is always half an hour later than she says. Why don't we go for a walk near our house? Then we won't waste time driving somewhere. I can walk around here at any time. I think if she isn't here by two o'clock, we shouldn't wait for her. It's not fair for her to spoil our day. She can meet us when she's finally ready. Perhaps you are right. It's hard to know what to do. Question six. You hear a boy talking about how he spent his time during the COVID nineteen lockdown. The lockdown due to COVID nineteen has changed our lives significantly. Some of us wake up late as we don't have to attend classes. My friend. 
spend most of their time playing online games till late night. Well, for me, I would start to revise my work after breakfast, then chat with my friends and take care of my pets. Now, listen again. The lockdown due to COVID-19 has changed our lives significantly. Some of us wake up late as we don't have to attend classes. My friend spend most of their time playing online games till late night. Well, for me, I will start to revise my work after breakfast, then chat with my friends and take care of my pets. Question 7. You hear a girl talking about how she got to school. Mom usually drives me to school every morning, but this morning, her car wouldn't start. She asked me to catch a bus instead, but we soon realized the bus ride would take too long. It would be quicker to get a taxi rather than wait for the bus. Finally, Mom tried starting her car one last time and it worked. We arrived just as the bell rang. Now, listen again. Mom usually drives me to school every morning, but this morning, her car wouldn't start. She asked me to catch a bus instead, but we soon realized the bus ride would take too long. It would be quicker to get a taxi rather than wait for the bus. Finally, Mom tried starting her car one last time and it worked. We arrived just as the bell rang. That is the end of part one. Now turn to part two. You will hear Leroy talking about his struggling experience. Choose the correct answer. A, B, or C. You now have one minute to look at Hi Maggie, it's me, Leroy. I thought about sending a postcard, but this is really cool now. I'm so tired today because we went to a party last night and I went to bed at 3 o'clock this morning. It was a great party. Anyway, let me tell you about the holiday so far. On Monday we were in Edinburgh. We drove there from London and I was next to William on the coach. Ten hours to get there, but it was worth it because it's an amazing city. The people are very friendly and they all seem so happy. Some of the group tried traditional Scottish cooking, but William and I had a hamburger instead. I wanted to buy a kilt, but they cost a lot of money, so instead I bought a large photograph of Edinburgh Castle. The next day we went to Paris on the train. I sat next to Marcus and we listened to his hip-hop CDs. The journey was very long, so we had lunch on the train, but I don't like French food, so I had a hot dog. Paris is beautiful too, and I bought some postcards which I'm going to send tomorrow. From there we went to Rome, again on the coach, and this time I sat next to John. We stopped for lunch in a service station on the motorway, and I had a large steak and a mountain of chips. It was delicious. When we got to Rome, I bought a book as a souvenir, so that I could read about it when I get home. Now I'm sitting next to Elizabeth on a train just outside Bavaria. We are eating asparagus, and Elizabeth is playing the harmonica I bought. She's terrible, but she's also quite nice, so I'm going to let her play it as much as she wants. 
Tomorrow we are flying to Helsinki in Finland. I'm going to sit next to Maria because she doesn't like flying and I want to help her relax. When we get there I'm going to eat spaghetti. I know it's strange to eat spaghetti in Finland, but our teacher was there some years ago and she said it was delicious. She also said that electronic goods are very, very cheap, so I'm going to buy a computer. They are nearly half the price. Anyway, it's time to get off the train now, so I'll say goodbye. Give a big kiss to Mum and Dad from me, and I'll see you soon. Bye! Now, listen again. Hi Maggie, it's me, Leroy. I thought about sending a postcard, but this is really cool now. I'm so tired today because we went to a party last night, and I went to bed at three o'clock this morning. It was a great party. Anyway, let me tell you about the holiday so far. On Monday, we were in Edinburgh. We drove there from London, and I was next to William on the coach. Ten hours to get there, but it was worth it because it's an amazing city. The people are very friendly, and they all seem so happy. Some of the group tried traditional Scottish cooking, but William and I had a hamburger instead. I wanted to buy a kilt, but they cost a lot of money, so instead I bought a large photograph of Edinburgh Castle. The next day we went to Paris on the train. I sat next to Marcus and we listened to his hip-hop CDs. The journey was very long, so we had lunch on the train, but I don't like French food, so I had a hot dog. Paris is beautiful too, and I bought some postcards which I'm going to send tomorrow. From there we went to Rome, again on the coach, and this time I sat next to John. We stopped for lunch in a service station on the motorway, and I had a large steak and a mountain of chips. It was delicious. When we got to Rome I bought a book as a souvenir, so that I could read about it when I get home. Now I'm sitting next to Elizabeth on a train just outside Bavaria. We are eating asparagus, and Elizabeth is playing the harmonica I bought. She's terrible, but she's also quite nice, so I'm going to let her play it as much as she wants. Tomorrow we are flying to Helsinki in Finland. I'm going to sit next to Maria because she doesn't like flying, and I want to help her relax. When we get there I'm going to eat spaghetti. I know it's strange to eat spaghetti in Finland, but our teacher was there some years ago and she said it was delicious. She also said that electronic goods are very, very cheap, so I'm going to buy a computer. They are nearly half the price. Anyway, it's time to get off the train now, so I'll say goodbye. Give a big kiss to Mum and Dad from me, and I'll see you soon. Bye! That is the end of part two. Now, turn to part three. You will hear five short extracts in which teenagers are talking about the world of science and technology. Choose from the list, A to G, what each speaker says. Use the letters only once. There are two extra letters which you do not need to use. You now have 30 seconds to look at part three. Speaker 1. I started the eco-friendly course at my local university, but I don't think it's right for me, really. It's aimed at people who want to become professionals, and I just wanted to learn about good technology to use at home. Speaker 2. I like a mountain bike for my birthday. I've checked the price online, and they are quite expensive. I want to try out first, see how it feels when I'm riding it. Luckily, my cousin says I can test his to see if it's really worth buying. Speaker 3 Oh, why are these new devices so complicated? I've read the label. It says that it's an energy-saving device, but it won't be using any energy at all if I can't even understand how to switch it on. Speaker 4 
four. At school, they were more girls to study maths and science. I'm really interested in them, and our school takes us to a really good exhibition every year where you can interact with the new technology. It's great. Speaker five. Recently, I've watched a program on television on how machines or androids will completely take over our life soon. Just imagine, you don't have to do a single work at home. Everything is done by the androids since they are programmed to do so. Isn't that interesting? Now, listen again. Speaker 1. I've started the eco-friendly course at my local university, but I don't think it's right for me, really. It's aimed at people who want to become professionals and I just wanted to learn about good technology to use at home. Speaker 2. I like a mountain bike for my birthday. I've checked the price online and they are quite expensive. I want to try out first, see how it feels when I'm riding it. Luckily, my cousin says I can test his to see if it's really worth buying. Speaker 3. Oh! Why are these new devices so complicated? I've read the label. It says that it's an energy-saving device, but it won't be using any energy at all if I can't even understand how to switch it on. Speaker 4 At school, there were more girls to study maths and science. I'm really interested in them, and our school takes us to a really good exhibition every year where you can interact with the new technology. It's great. Speaker 5 Recently, I've watched a program on television on how machines or androids will completely take over our life soon. Just imagine, you don't have to do a single work at home. Everything is done by the androids since they are programmed to do so. Isn't that interesting? That is the end of part 3. Now turn to part 4. You will hear a head teacher, Richard Sandler, talking about his plans to create a wildlife area in the school grounds. For questions 21 to 30, fill in the missing information in each numbered space. Use no more than one word for each space. You now have one minute to look at part four. Hello. Each week in Wildlife Matters, we look at ways in which local people are helping their environment. Today I've come to Broadland School to talk to head teacher Richard Sandland about his plans to create a wildlife area in the school grounds. Hi Richard. Hello and welcome. So what gave you the idea of creating a wildlife area? Well, there was a corner of the school field which wasn't being used for sports or anything else and as nobody was looking after it, it had become a bit wild. I was looking at it one day when I noticed how many butterflies and other insects were buzzing around the area. It was full of wildlife. I realized that if we did some work to make it even more attractive to wildlife, we could help our local environment while teaching the students about science and nature at the same time. So tell us about what you and the students are planning to do. Well, firstly, we'll be cutting down a lot of this long grass. 
It's not particularly helpful to wildlife, and we want to encourage wildflowers to grow amongst the shorter grass instead, which will attract more insects. We'll be planting a few trees, which will attract birds, and in the middle, we're going to have a pond. Will the students be doing a lot of the work themselves? Oh yes, they'll be doing most of it. We start this weekend, and we've got a large group who can't wait to throw themselves into the project. It'll have to be done after school or on Saturday mornings, but fortunately that hasn't put them off. Lots of them are interested in nature conservation, so they see it as an exciting hobby. Have you needed to get expert advice on creating the wildlife area? Yes, I'd had the original idea, but I didn't really know how to put it into action. An expert from the local wildlife society came to talk to the school and helped us to plan what we would do. The students got really excited because they were able to suggest their own ideas and get involved in the planning. Will you be able to use the wildlife area to teach normal school subjects? Yes, indeed. Education these days is excellent, but it's missing something. Children don't learn the vital connection between themselves and the natural world anymore. When I was young, we were always going on nature walks, learning about trees and birds and so on. And although students have lots more choice of subjects these days, they lack that connection. We'll still be teaching them everything they need to learn, but we'll be using the wildlife area as our inspiration and as a useful resource. I can't wait to come back in six months' time and see how it's looking. I hope by then we'll have transformed this area into a beautiful wildlife haven. The students will be able to give you a full report on everything we've attracted to the garden. In the meantime, they'll be writing regular blogs for the school's website, and I'll be keeping a photographic record of every stage. It's very exciting. Best of luck, Richard. Thanks. Now listen again. Hello. Each week in Wildlife Matters, we look at ways in which local people are helping their environment. Today, I've come to Broadland School to talk to head teacher Richard Sandland about his plans to create a wildlife area in the school grounds. Hi, Richard. Hello and welcome. So, what gave you the idea of creating a wildlife area? Well, there was a corner of the school field which wasn't being used for sports or anything else, and as nobody was looking after it, it had become a bit wild. I was looking at it one day when I noticed how many butterflies and other insects were buzzing around the area. It was full of wildlife. I realized that if we did some work to make it even more attractive to wildlife, we could help our local environment while teaching the students about science and nature at the same time. So tell us about what you and the students are planning to do. Well, firstly, we'll be cutting down a lot of this long grass. It's not particularly helpful to wildlife, and we want to encourage wildflowers to grow amongst the shorter grass instead, which will attract more insects. We'll be planting a few trees, which will attract birds, and in the middle, we're going to have a pond. Will the students be doing a lot of the work themselves? Oh yes, they'll be doing most of it. We start this weekend, and we've got a large group who can't wait to throw themselves into the project. It'll have to be done after school or on Saturday mornings, but fortunately, that hasn't put them off. Lots of them are interested in nature conservation, so they see it as an exciting hobby. Have you needed to get expert advice on creating the wildlife area? Yes, I'd had the original idea, but I didn't really know how to put it into action. An expert from the local wildlife society came to talk to the school and helped us to plan what we would do. The students got really excited because they were able to suggest their own ideas and get involved in the planning. Will you be able to use the wildlife area to teach normal school subjects? Yes, indeed. Education these days is excellent, but it's missing something. Children don't learn the vital connection between themselves and the natural world anymore. When I was young, we were always going on nature walks, learning about trees and birds and so on. And although students have lots more choice of subjects these days, they lack that connection. 
we'll still be teaching them everything they need to learn, but we'll be using the wildlife area as our inspiration and as a useful resource. I can't wait to come back in six months' time and see how it's looking. I hope by then we'll have transformed this area into a beautiful wildlife haven. The students will be able to give you a full report on everything we've attracted to the garden. In the meantime, they'll be writing regular blogs for the school's website, and I'll be keeping a photographic record of every stage. It's very exciting. Best of luck, Richard. Thanks. That is the end of part four. You now have six minutes to check and copy your answers onto the answer sheet.
that is the end of the test.